Hi, I'm Paris, and a couple months ago I had a worrisome 10 days where I gained about 5 pounds, couldn't figure out where the weight was coming from until it occurred to me I'd gotten sick and I was drinking so much tea and I had decided to sweeten that tea with allulose. Allulose is supposed to be a very low calorie sweetener, but I was having six or so cups a day with maybe a tablespoon of this in each cup. So I was consuming quite a bit of it. And once it occurred to me that maybe this was causing my weight gain, I would cut out the allulose and within a week, five pounds fell off. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it was the allulose that caused me to gain that weight. Could have been a coincidence. So I decided I would repeat the experiment after my weight returned to its baseline. Though I would like it lower, my weight over the past year has settled in right at about 190 pounds and stayed that way very consistently. So I decided to repeat the experiment without being sick. I would start adding allulose to my daily cups of tea and see what happened with my weight. So here's the graph of that couple weeks. As you can see, I did put on a couple pounds that first week taking the allulose, and then when I stopped it, it pretty quickly all came back off. Now, I didn't have the nearly five pound weight gain, which I had previously. I'll show you in this graph, you can see what happened in late November, early December when I was doing the six cups a day. This time around, I just couldn't drink that much tea a day, so I was doing maybe three or four cups a day, and I had the about two pound weight gain. Now, allulose is considered a rare sugar, not an artificial sweetener, but the chemical formulation of it is a little bit different than regular sugar, so your body doesn't metabolize it, it passes on through for the most part. That being the case, and the fact that the weight came on so rapidly and came off so rapidly makes me think it wasn't actually developing fat on my body. There must have been something else causing the weight gain. And a comment by a viewer who watched my previous video, I think really hit the nail on the head of what's going on. Troy Chinen commented, never heard of allulose until now, but is it possible that it induces water storage similar to glycogen synthesis? I think that's what it's got to be. It was water weight, and I don't know exactly what was going on inside me that did that, but consuming lots of allulose, in my case, seemed to have me retain the water, which made my weight go up and explains how it came back off so quickly. Now, in the list of, well, not exactly side effects, but if you overconsume allulose, they do mention that you can experience bloating, which I always thought of more as a gassy thing, but some women I know do mention bloating when having their period as more of a water retention thing. The rings are hard to get off the fingers and you just feel bloated and full of water everywhere. So I'm not sure which type of bloating they were referring to, maybe both when they mention it as a side effect of allulose. But it's definitely the case with me that if I consumed more than a tablespoon or so of allulose per day, that I would see the water retention, I would see my weight going up. But it seems like the more I have of it, the more water weight I retain, which goes away fairly quickly when you stop taking it, which is good. But I'm thinking if you are retaining that water, one common side effect of that is your blood pressure will go up. That's why they give you diuretics is one of the first things to try to lower your blood pressure. It flushes the water out of your system and lowers your blood pressure. So that could be a concern, especially for someone who already has high blood pressure. But my sweetener now, I was doing a stevia monk fruit blend, but researching that as part of all this, I found that they think stevia really isn't good for your intestinal microbiome, that it disturbs it. And I am working on taking good care of my microbiome. So I now sweeten just with monk fruit. Not that I know this is the best thing for me to use, but there aren't any studies out there saying it isn't. This is monk fruit sweetener in a liquid form, so I add drops to my cup of tea, about five or six drops. The serving size, I think, is eight or nine drops, and going by that, you have about 270 servings, so you can get that many uses, that many cups of tea with this amount of sweetener for about $12. That averages out to about five cents a cup for the sweetener. You may not have tried allulose yet or even heard of it, but this will be the year of allulose 2020 when it's going to replace a fair amount of sugar in loads of drinks and processed foods. So if you run into the experience I had in early December where my weight was going up day by day and I was panicking about what's going on, take a closer look at any processed sweet foods, any processed treats that you're having and see if they haven't started putting allulose in that. Even if it's not so much in this treat, if you're having this treat and this treat and this drink, you could be having several tablespoons of it a day. If you'd like to find out more about powdered allulose and liquid monk fruit, I'll link to both these products down below this video. And if you're waiting on the latest update, as I mentioned a week ago, I had my doctor's appointment upcoming. I've been to that. So my experience over the past year and some losing almost 60 pounds, I'm going to update you on how my 
insulin level is now, blood sugars, cholesterol, all of that stuff in a very soon upcoming video. So be sure and click subscribe down below so you'll get notified when that video goes up and I'll see you on the next review.